In the meantime, Amanda Knox's former boyfriend may be trying to distance himself from her as they face a new murder trial. Rafael Saletito now saying that he has nothing to do with Knox's case and that he was just dragged into an unfortunate situation. The dramatic shift from the couple's previous strategy of sticking together comes as their legal teams prepare for a new trial in the murder of Knox's former roommate. Let's talk about it with Lise Wheel, a Fox News legal analyst, and Philip Holloway, a criminal defense attorney. Welcome to you both. Good to be Thank here. You. All right, so Lisa, I want to start with you. Uh, it was a stick together. I mean, they'd only been dating for a week when this happened, and so it's, it seems strange, but it seemed like the strategy worked for them uh, up till now. Up until uh, now, right. Yeah, but now, uh, you know, breaking apart. Absolutely. Now, after seven years, Shannon, of being together and sort of being, you know, we're saying the same story. We were together. We had nothing to do with you. We were not complicit. There was nothing going on here. After they've now both been convicted, but by the way, he's there much closer to the appellate process, whereas Amanda Knox is safely in Seattle. We're not going to extradite her. We being the United States is not going to extradite her. So she's really saying nothing. He's now with his defense lawyer saying, you know, after seven years, I'm rethinking that, saying there might have just been a tidge of evidence against Amanda Knox but not against me. Uh, it's a little bit too late, I think. Yeah, and Philip, I know that sometimes this is just what prosecutors want to see because then you have the defendants not only uh, fighting against the prosecutors but against themselves potentially as well. So, they, you know, they've got two fronts. Absolutely. This is the old throw the co-defendant right up under the bus routine. Up until now, as you said, uh, he has been her alibi. Now what he's doing is he's providing a little bit of a crack in that alibi so that it's conceivable that maybe she's guilty while he can still maintain, hey, I'm innocent. Uh, I never left the house. She left for a little while. Uh, look at her, not me. Right. Does, does it help him at all the fact that it sounds like she's now supportive of this strategy publicly saying you know yeah he did just get kind of dragged into this and I'm supportive of the move that he's making does that help him at all it helps him a little bit just because but again she's so far away and I just want to point out something Shannon if this would happen in this country in the U.S. those defendants would have been split from the very beginning and there would have been separate trials and potentially people testifying one against each other but to have them together like this you know a Siamese twins leads uh, you know evidently to this kind of the, a reality but it may help him just a little bit, but not so much. Yeah, Philip, was this a misstep, as Lise pointed out, that maybe this should have been done a lot earlier in the process? Well, I, I'm going to have to take a little bit of an issue with what she said because it's actually kind of routine. I've been involved in a number of trials where you had co-defendants being tried together before the same jury, and when they're pointing the fingers at each other, it's a prosecutor's dream because not only do they have to fight the prosecutor and sometimes even the judge, but they're fighting against each other, and it absolutely splits them up, and it usually does not end well for the defendants, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa, any prediction on how this does or doesn't work for him? I don't think it's going to work for him. It's going to go through now an appeal. He's got 25 years. He, she's got 28. Again, she's not going to be extradited to this country. I don't see that appeal being overturned. I mean, I don't see the convictions being overturned. All right. Another hot murder case. A Utah doctor convicted of killing his wife. He's now seeking a new trial. Lawyers for the doctor, Martin McNeil, say that his conviction should be thrown out because the jury wasn't told about a deal the prosecution made in exchange for a witness's testimony. Philip, we'll start with you. How important is it that the jury know that information, that potentially the testimony that they got, there was a deal in the works and that's how they got it? Anytime any witness in a criminal case, especially one who's facing charges, has a motive to fabricate evidence, that is something that's highly relevant. It's constitutionally required that not only is it turned over to the defense, but that the defense attorney use it and let the jury know about it because if this guy or witness has, a, has the opportunity to get on the stand and say something not true in order to help themselves, it can absolutely affect the outcome of the trial. Philip is absolutely right on that, but the standard, Shannon, though, is a higher standard once you've had a conviction. The standard is would the conviction, would the trial have turned out differently but for that evidence being on the stand, in, in this case, the jailhouse snitch. So what the prosecutor is going to argue, okay, yeah, that was a mistake, but the verdict would have been the same because look at all this panoply of evidence. Look at all this stuff that we pointed out to you, the circumstantial evidence, the daughter testified, daughters testifying, all of that. The verdict would have been the same, Shannon. Yeah, Philip, it sounds like that's exactly what the prosecutors are going to argue here. So do you think the doctor has any luck with going this route and trying to uh, get a new trial? Well, as I understand it, the judge, you know, took a recess and I'm going to sit on this for a couple of months because it, the, the defense apparently gave him quite a bit to think about. So, you know, whether or not it, it would affect the outcome of a trial is going to be decided not only by the judge hearing this motion for a new trial, but it's also going to be considered when, the, when that ruling goes up on appeal because either side is going to appeal it, whichever side loses at this point. 
All right, Lise, uh, a lot of times folks hear this uh, this kind of thing, uh, that an inmate, somebody who was in right. with, with the, uh, the suspect, the defendant, uh, is going to tell a story on them. And a lot of folks immediately discredit that and say, well, you know, they're trying to get something for themselves. They're going right. to uh, get a good deal out of it. But, I mean, in a lot of cases, it is legitimate testimony. It absolutely is. I mean, you're in the jail, and you talk to somebody in the jail, and you say, you confess, or you do, you know, even if it's not quite a confession, you, you, you sort of rat yourself out to a snitch, and then that person obviously goes to the prosecutor and tries to make a deal. Shannon, it happens every day. Should the prosecution have turned this information over to the defense? Absolutely. But again, the test is, would the verdict have been different but for that? Mm, we'll see what the judge ultimately says. Lise and Phil, great to see you both. Thank you.